The world has changed a lot within the past year. With the pandemic, there has been many changes within the technological arena. The way we interact, the way we work, the way we learn, and even the way we play, they have all changed and they are still changing. People have had to develop their skills and competencies that have enabled them to function and succeed as they adapt to the changing environment. Nigerian organizations, they've been compelled to accept remote work as a possible new norm. And while many people have had opportunities to learn and adapt to these changes, there is still a large group of people that have been technologically excluded. Many schools had to completely close down during the pandemic because they didn't have the capacity, the tools or the resources to engage their students online. This is a big issue. And if it's left unattended, it will widen the digital gap between those that have access and the technologically excluded group. It will create further inequalities between these groups and even make it a bit more difficult for those that don't have access or are not digitally literate to catch up at a later time. Even for those that have access, there's still the issue of technology adoption. That is outside social media interaction. The pandemic has shown just how digital our world has become. It is no longer sufficient to just be able to read and write. We need to become digitally literate. And in many cases, to become digitally fluent. People have started understanding the importance of acquiring these technological skills. That is why during the lockdown, many people acquired one or more skills, which is really good. But what are we doing with these skills? After we've learned these skills, what next? Have we used the skills that we've acquired to create solutions for our environment? Have we used the skills we've acquired to develop practical, deployable solutions to ease the tensions and the restraints and constraints that have been created by this pandemic? Have we leveraged technology to be able to improve access and technology adoption for the people that are not digitally literate or do not have access? It is important to use these skills. We need to apply them, make them useful. And while we are talking about skills, research studies suggest that there is still a skills gap across many sectors. And many of them are particularly around science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. There's a misalignment between the skills that have been acquired and the skills that are needed. Many graduates in Nigeria are not employable because the skills they've acquired, many of them theoretical, are not the skills that are needed by the employers. As of today, the unemployment rate in Nigeria stands at about 27%. Let me put this in perspective. If we look at our labor force, that we have about 80 million people and 22 million people are unemployed. If we take this a bit further and look at the age group between 15 and 34, that percentage goes up to 34%. That is a high number. There is a need for repositioning to support innovation. We need to upskill our youth. We need to provide them with practical application places where they could apply what they have learned. STEM provides such a foundation. It provides an opportunity for people to apply what they've learned. It provides an opportunity for them to adapt and solve problems. STEM is an approach to learning that incorporates aspects of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It provides opportunities to develop skills, transferable skills. And just as it is important to start learning to read and write from a young age, it is also very important to acquire some of these technological skills. Because these skills, they form the foundation for which we use to 
acquire and develop other skills, which don't have to be related to careers in STEM, but they form the foundation. We've had young people below the age of 16 that have participated in some of our programs at Tech West STEM Academy, and they've created wonderful solutions. Yusuf Molumo, 15 years, he created an application that tracked the coronavirus situation within his community. Phoebe Mwachuku, 15 years. She created a vision sensor application for people that are visually impaired so that they are able to navigate their environment. This was particularly very thoughtful because of the coronavirus pandemic um, restrictions where there were no contacts allowed. Sean Esio Meme, 11 years, created a mood booster application that tried to identify how people felt and provided activities that improved their moods. These are just a few of the solutions that could be created, but there's room for more. We believe that by providing opportunities where people could apply what they've learned, it could, and I am leverage on technology, it could improve our, the digital literacy and also enhance our digital economy. And while we are talking about skills, it's important to know that the world of works is constantly changing. So the skills we have now are not the skills that we would use in the future. And just the same way as the skills that we're using now are not the ones we used in the past. The World Economic Forum has predicted that by the year 2030, one billion people will need to be reskilled for the works of the future. That is a huge number. So what do we do? We cannot afford to hold on to what we just know. We need to do a constant recheck of the skills that we have. The pandemic has shown just how quickly things change. Technology has become indispensable to STEM. Different activities that involve STEM leverage on technology. And digital literacy is a product of STEM education. It has become a requisite skill for the future. And the future is now. In fact, as far back as 2011, UNESCO had identified digital skills as an essential life skill. So if you are not digitally literate, become digitally literate. If you feel you've attained digital literacy, become digitally fluent. And if you feel that you are fluent, you could always learn a new skill. The point is, learning should be a lifelong process, irrespective of the age. I'll leave you with a quote by Alvin Toffler. The digital illiterate of the 21st century is not someone that cannot read or write. It will be someone that cannot learn, unlearn, or relearn. So do not be afraid to learn a new skill. Reskill, upskill. Stay relevant and be the change we want to see in our future. Thank you.